prone neck work, I don't generally do seated, but this table is too low for me. So I'm going to sit down. Uh, I do most of my supine work seated when I'm working in the neck, but I tend to be standing for my prone work. Uh, if your table is at just kind of the right height where you can do both because you have a pretty tall stool, you don't have to worry about moving it. If you've got the lift table, it's nice. You can put it whatever height fits. So, like I said, normally I wouldn't be seated uh, in this position, but I'm, I'm not going to hunch over. So, before we get into some crazier or different or more unusual techniques to you, we're going to kind of review some of the things we did supine that can also be done prone. So things like using the fifth metacarpal head and coming in to work here on levator, the same can be done here. And this can be done with static pressure with two hands, just with one. We can uh, glide with this so I can go ac across the levator scap insertion here. So I'm, I'm rubbing cross fiber with that knuckle where I can run down into it and press that back up into the neck. I try not to put too much downward pressure after I get past about C5 because I don't want to drive his face into the face cradle. So I tend to work the base of the neck in this position uh, with that fifth metacarpal head. It's important to note that the pressure is just here, not on this pinky finger. If you start pushing on the backs of the fingers like that, you're firing those extensors every time and that, that'll hurt him in a hurry. So I'm using that knuckle to, to work in here, just like that. I can do that same idea of pull bow shoot tiger that we did with the second metacarpal head with this fifth metacarpal head in this position, making little circles. I'm just going like this, but it's a small circle because I'm in that one little area. You can use the second metacarpal head in this position, but I don't like pronating that uh, wrist all that much. So if I'm working down more on top of the trap, right here at the base of the neck, I will do that. But for the most part, I'll stick with that fifth metacarpal head through here. The pip joint of the second digit, though, is really useful to get into the base of the neck, and, or even a little higher up here into the paraspinals. I'm just going to feel for a tight spot and be applying that pressure diagonally down and across, just like that. Let me know if I feel like I'm pushing your face down into the cradle too high. A lot of times this will get kind of right into the crook of the neck here really well. So right at the junction of the shoulder and the neck. And I can press in with that. Which this area right through here is full of junk for most of us. Tight, taut bands. So it's just like me coming in to work with my fingers. But once I find that tight spot, I'm just going to come in and work here with my pip joint. It's surprisingly simple. Just takes a little getting used to not feeling like you're sliding all over the place or you can't feel how much pressure you're pushing. The Electronon is also wonderful for this same little spot here that we're working. I can bring this in a bunch of different angles, right? Whether it's vertical or laid way down, just depending on how it fits this neck best. And I'm going to gently move it around until I feel where that really tight spot is. And then I'm going to apply that pressure down towards the tailbone. Just like that. Just let me know if that's too much pressure. That little oscillation can also be used in this position. So when I find where I'm going to apply that pressure and I get pushed in, I'm just going to be pronating and supinating rapidly to give it a little oscillation, or vibration. You just want to make sure you're not like whacking the person in the head <laughs> with your hand. So we'll get started just with those. The fifth metacarpal head working on either side of the spine and up into the base of the spine here. We worked with the pip joint in here and then the electronaut. Short and sweet to get warmed up. Then we'll get to some no finger grasping or no thumb grasping, rather. 